welcome to the Winter Academy. I'm Emma Chamberlain and I'm going to be showing you how to make this beautiful winter wonderland cake. In this tutorial I'll be showing you how to use twinkle dust which is now going to be launching in a fantastic pump spray. Uh, Renshaw Royal Icing, fantastic and delicious marshmallow extra and also 1kg flower modelling paste. So the first thing we need to do is make the decorations. When we're using flower modelling paste, it needs some time to dry and set, so it sets really nice and firm. I've got a decoration here just to show you just how firm that sets. So that's really nice and firm now, and it'll set with a snap. Um, so that's got all the gums in it that makes it really extra strength and sets really nice and firm. We we'll just need to do these first, so we've got plenty of drying and time. Usually sets within 24 hours, so you can get nice and organised, just um, get your decorations done the day before or further in advance, keep them in a, in a box, um, ready so you're nice and organised. The flower modelling paste is really firm because it, it has got all the gums in it and virtually no fat. So you do need to work it in small amounts so that you can uh, break it down. If you try to knead it all at once, you'd hurt your hands. So break it down so it's nice and easy. And you can see there now that the paste is starting to activate, that kneading is starting to activate the gums. So now we've got that all kneaded up, those little individual blocks, we can bring it all together and just make it so it's a nice smooth um, bit of paste all nice and together. See you there. And then just a little bit of corn flour down. And then I'm going to use a small rolling pin because you can use more pressure on smaller amounts of paste than a big one. Keep moving it around. And we're going to pin this really nice and thin because we want our little snowflakes to be really nice and delicate. Okay, so you can see there now just how thin I pin that paste. You can pin out on Trex, so that's white fat. You can just put a little smear on your board. But I find it easier to use corn flour when you're using a plunger cutter for the decorations. Just because your paste sticks to the board, it tends to stick to the board rather than come away in your cutter. So I always use um, I always use corn flour for this application. So I'm just going to cut out. So I've got a large and a medium sized cutter. So I'm just going to cut out 10 large and 20 small. So when you're cutting it out, I always just give it a little wiggle and just press all the way around just to make sure that you've cut it. And then just remove that excess and then just rub your hand over the top. If you to reject straight away sometimes because it's a plastic cutter, you can get a little frayed edge around the edge, but if you just rub it over the palm of your hand, that gets rid of all of those. And I've got a mat here, which I'm just going to press down, and then it leaves the little impression. You can see just how nice and thin and delicate that is. Transfer these over nice and gently with a knife underneath just to transfer over to a board. So now this paste that we've got left over, because it has been out just while we've been cutting those, you can add a little bit of Trex to it like I mentioned earlier for pinning out, but you can also mix it into the paste just to soften it a little bit. You can do this anyway if you prefer a softer, slightly softer paste. We do need to have it that firm because it's got all the, the gums in it which makes it set. 
But if you just prefer to work with a paste that's slightly more pliable, you can just mix a little bit of um, Trex into it. it. Just gives it a nice softer texture. So again, pin it out really nice and thin. You want it almost paper thin. Finish off cutting off out all those little snowflakes. I just managed to get that last snowflake out with just enough paste pinned out, which is great. Um, but again, you can reuse that, so just pop that into a little bag um, and save it for later for a different decoration. Absolutely fine, so just in a little uh, grip seal bag or wrap it in cling film and put it in a, um, a sandwich container kind of thing. So I'm going to put these away now just to let them dry um, for about 24 hours. So the next task is to make the central snowflake. So we're going to do this by using a giant snowflake cutter. So take some flour and modeling paste. We need quite a bit for, for this one because we need to get quite thick. I'm doing um, pasting and thin, I just fold over and tuck the excess of the one side that you've not cut and then just bring that up around it and then put that in a bag. By keeping it in its original packaging, that keeps the paste the nicest. If you were to take it all out, then you've exposed it to air, but because that's still got contact with the plastic, it keeps it nice and um, airtight still. And again, just knead this up in small little sections. If you do ever struggle to sort of just start kneading it down, sometimes when it's firm in that block it's quite hard to do and if you've not got really strong hands anyway, you can find it quite difficult. A really good tip that I always do, or if I've got a lot of paste to do, is just squish it with my rolling pin and that really helps just to break it down initially and then you can get in there and knead it with your hands. Okay, so now we've needed all the little pieces, bring it all together into one smooth ball. Just give it a good knead. You want it so it feels slightly tacky. I don't know if you can hear that, but there's like a little pull. It's not sticky, it's just a little pull on that outside. That's the kind of texture that you want. You don't want it feeling dry. A lot of people, a lot of common, the common question we get about flour and modelling paste is how do you stop it from drying and cracking? It's just a matter of kneading it and not using too much. You can see I've kneaded without any icing sugar or corn flour because it just doesn't need it. Um, you only need that sort of, um, you only need icing sugar or corn flour just to stop it from sticking when you're pinning it out. But when you're kneading it, it doesn't need anything extra. So that's ready now to go. So it's all nice and smooth. So now we put a little bit of corn flour down, not too much. And this time I'm going to use a big rolling pin because I want to get it, the pressure nice and even so we get a nice even thickness. I'm just going to pin out that paste so it's just big enough from a snowflake, which it is. Smooth it over with your smoother just to make sure it is really nice and flat. And then cut your snowflake out. Again, I always just give it a little wiggle, just a few little rotations just to make sure it's all nice and cut sharply. And then just remove the excess. Now again, you can use this again, just bring it back up into a ball and save for later in a grip seal bag. Just put a little touch of corn flour down just so it doesn't stick while we're trying to put it on a stick. So here I've got a, um, a food 
um, kebab stick. I'm just going to attach it to this. So, put tea towel down just to protect your work surface. I'm going to give it a quick spray of water. So this is just a little spray bottle and I've put bio cool water in there so we know it's sterilised. And then to insert the skewer, I always use one of these on the top just so that it holds it nice and firm in place because sometimes you can, when you're pushing it in, it can push it away or distort the shape. But I find if I, you just hold down with a smoother on the top surface, it just keeps it where you want it to be. And then I'm just going to insert it through the point here. In, try and keep it in the middle because what tends to happen is um, you can go too high and then you get like a line here or it pokes through. So just try and make sure you keep it in the middle. And then I'm twisting. I'm not pushing because you'll distort the shape. You just twist it through the centre. And you want it to go about three quarters of the way. But try and keep it through the centre. That'll do. And then the next is to cut out these little centres. So it almost looks like it's gravity defying because you've got your stick through the centre, but you cut these ones out. So here we just use a um, small rose petal cutter. Um, and it's a really good shape just to cut out that centre. So how I do this is I match up the point of that petal cutter with the bit that comes on the inside, that way around. And then just press all the way through. And I'm just gonna get a little scribe there. that out of your cutter. Again, these can be saved for later, so I'll just put these away in a little grip seal bag. I'm gonna put a touch of corn flour down and then ooh, and then just pop it onto the onto a board and allow that to dry. Now that might take a little bit while longer than those smaller snowflakes just because of the size of it and it's quite thick. You might want to um, part way through, like look, maybe leave it two days turn it over so that it's getting air to both sides. Alternatively, um, you can also put it on in the oven on a very, very low temperature. So literally like 50 degrees, um, turn it on, let it heat up and then turn it off and that will accelerate the drying time, um, make it quicker. But generally, if you're organized, you can do this in advance um, during the weekend before or whatever. Again, just keep it in a, in a, in a box so it's nice and nice and clean and tidy and safe, you won't get knocked. So now that our small snowflakes have set, they're really nice and firm, we're just going to decorate these with some twinkle dust. Um, so how we apply twinkle dust, you can dry dust it if you want, but if you want a really nice thick coat, it's best to use edible glue. Um, so we're just going to brush this over the top surface of each snowflake. So just give each little part of the snowflake a nice little brush of glue. In the pump you can see that it's settled, so I'm just going to give that a little bit of a shake just to loosen it off. And then the really good thing about the top is that you can angle it so that you can always keep the base of the pump nice and straight and then this can be angled to, to whichever way you need the direction of the, the pump, the spray to go. So all I'm going to do now is just keep it upright 
and then just spray over the top. Now every couple of pumps you just want to give it another little shake just to loosen it off because it does settle a little bit but you can see there it gives a really nice coating and this ensures that the, um, the amount of product you use is you're maximizing the usage so that you're not sprinkling it everywhere and then overloading the decoration but it just gives the, just the right amount. So again just give it a little shake and then continue to pump. Now I've broken that one there, but I'm not going to panic because all we need to do when we put it on the cake is we just need to overlap it like that so we can still use it. We don't need to, that we can, oh no, I'm missing one down now. So it's always a way to fix things if some, a little mishap happens. So now that glue needs to set um, so that the twinkle dust stays in place. If you start touching them now, you'll start messing it all up and you'll get like fingerprints in it. So we just need to let them that set for about half an hour just so, while that um, glue sets. Okay, next job is we've got our central snowflake, which is all nice and firm now. Um, so we're just going to pipe some details onto it and add some jiggies just to the top. So we're going to use Renshaw Royal Icing, which is perfect for adding details and for piping. Um, so I'm just going to take a little bit out of the pot and just pop it onto a scraper, just because I've got everything everywhere. You can do it on the board if you, if you prefer. Put the lid back on straight away so that it doesn't dry out and then I'm just going to add a little spritz of water. So these little spray bottles are really handy so you can disperse small amounts otherwise you're trying to drop it in with a paintbrush um, and you can, it's very easy to add too much. So just a little spray and then just give it a paddle on the, on the scraper just to make it smooth. You can see the texture of that has changed now, so it's, it's not looking so fluffy um, and it's, you know, nice and smooth and glossy. So you can feel the thickness, you can feel the tension on it when you paddle it. You've got to think, you've got to pipe that in a nice neat way so that you, you're not straining. So if you do need to add a little touch more water, just give it another little spray and then paddle that in. popping it in the bag. So just put it straight in and then close your hand at both sides and then just pull the palette knife out and then fold it in the corners and then straight down. Push the icing down to the end. Okay so next job is we want to coat the whole of this snowflake with twinkle dust. So again just like we did with the small ones we're going to brush all over with edible glue but we've got the bits on the inside that we also want to coat as well. So I always start with those awkward bits first so I know that they've got a covering, then I'll do that top surface. So just very gently lift it and brush in all those awkward to reach places so that you know that you've got them all. If you work in a clockwise or anti-clockwise motion, then you know that you've got every single little nook and cranny. Of when you think you've got everywhere just to smooth it all out make sure there's no little blobs of glue and then take your 
Twinkle Dust Pump. Give it a little shake. And then just rinse all over. Make sure you get into those little areas that are hard to reach. So if you want to coat the back as well, which is something that I'm not showing in the video, is you do that first and just brush on the back and then spritz it and then let that dry and then turn it over and do the front side. Um, yeah, just to make sure that I've, I have said that to you. Um, okay, so now what we want to do is we just want to pipe all these little details. So where we start with is we're going to pipe from one side all the way down to the other. So leave, you can see there, there's some little um, pressure piped, little, um, I don't know what you call those, those little extra bits. So just leave a small gap at the end, about half a centimetre, and then just press on the bag, release the ice in, and then it takes a little bit of practice just to get your, your, your uh, pressure and your motion in sync with each other. So you just need to go at a speed that you're happy with, with the amount of pressure that you've, you've added to the bag. And then you meet the line in the middle, and you're just going to bring those lines out to the centre point. Turn in the snowflake so it's comfortable for you to pipe. Don't try to pipe in awkward positions. Okay, the next bit we pipe is these centre parts. Just going following the shape of the little cutouts that we did. Again, meet in the middle, bring it round, let it fall. There we've got the snowflake all piped up um, with all the little details on. So just going to set that to one side and let that glue and let the royal icing set. So just leave it for a couple of hours just to make sure that it's all nice and um, all nice and dry. Okay, so now we're going to cover the cake. Um, now I have pre-stacked um, and ganache this cake just for speed. Um, so this is white chocolate ganache. And I've made that with three parts chocolate, white chocolate, with one part cream. 
um, and then just heated the cream up in the microwave and then we just poured it over the top and then just give it a mix. If you need to give it a very small um, blast just to make sure all the chocolate's melted, you can do, but just make sure that you just do it second by second rather than leaving it in there because you will split it. Um, so I'm going to use the marshmallow flavour extra. Now this has all the properties that the normal extra have, but that's all the functionality that everyone loves. It's got all the gums in there, it's exactly the same, it's just the flavour that's changed. And you can smell the aroma of the marshmallow flavour straight away as soon as you open it. It just smells divine, really tasty. And just break it down into manageable, manageable size chunks. To knead up. So I'll just work on a small piece at a time and do the next one. Now you notice that I'm kneading without any icing sugar on the table. That's because we just want to wake the gums and the fats up in the paste. We don't need to add any more icing sugar or any more anything that's drying in to the actual icing because that will impede how well it covers so we always just need without any of any of those and we just use it for when we're pinning out the wrench our extra does need to be needed because like i say it has got all the gum extra gums in there so it's got a um, gum trend camp and cmc in there or tyler powder as you might know it and it just gives it lots of lovely stretch. So if I just take a small piece and need that, I can show you just how stretchy it really is. And that's why it's perfect for taller, deeper cakes and sharp edges because you get that stretch and it goes down the cake. Sometimes other pace can start to show weakness once you get about halfway and then start to rip and show um, um, stress areas, you know, with elephant skin, um, but there you can see just how stretchy and lovely that paste is. It's also really sil silky smooth uh, when it goes on the cake and you polish it up. It's got a really nice satin sheen, so it's just perfect for all these sort of taller, sharper cakes that are really on trend at the moment. I just need that all that up. The hardest bit is kneading it up, just because we want to get it working, but then after that it is an absolute breeze. Now we've got a little bit of icing sugar down. I'm just going to smooth that around, just to make sure it's got nice even coverage. And then the bit I have on my hand, I always just rub that a little bit over my rolling pin. Never put any icing sugar on that top surface. That's your presentation side. So you always want that to remain really nice and supple. If you start any icing sugar to it, you're just going to dry it out. Right, it's a nice medium to firm pressure. Keep it turning. Now if you do get one or two little herbals, you can just use a small acupuncture needle or a scriber just to pop those herbals and release the air. So just rub your finger over the top to release, get the air out and just smooth it over. The sooner you get them out, at the start of pinning, the better, because then the paste will level out. If you do them right at the end, you'll end up with a little dint and you don't want that. So just keep your eye out if you do see any of those. Okay, so you can see there now that I've pinned that out really nice and thin. It's about three millimeters. 
Um, so what we need to do next is just um, give the cake a quick spray of water. So again, a little spray bottle, and I'm just going to spray that all over. So I've done it on a tea towel just to mop up any excess water. I'm just doing on that top edge. And then just dry off that board because we don't want the icing to stick to the board. Now I find it really easy to cover uh, with the cake on one of these because then you've got something to manoeuvre the cake around with. Otherwise you're trying to get underneath and touch that board and then you can end up damaging the cake that way. So I use um, these, these, they're just dinner mats that you can buy from the supermarket, they're dead easy to use. So lift your, drape your icing over your rolling pin and match that bottom edge of the disc with the base of the cake and then just flip it over nice and confident and then just use your hand to expel any air around that top edge. Make sure that you get full contact with the top of the cake. And then I'm using that part of my hand just to seal in that top edge all the way around because that is the highest stress area because all the weight of the icing is on there. Now we want to start getting the icing on the side of the cake so we do that just by patting down and going all the way down the cake. complete forms back where you've just done, just go back over it and just pat the icing in. All the excess icing will end up down the bottom and like I was saying, extra has so much stretch that it does just stretch down the side of the cake and it's still nice and smooth. So just unfold the pleat and then pass it down. Okay, so once we've got full contact with all of the cake, just move it all over and tuck it in around the bottom. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to cut round that base but leave about at least a centimetre, which just helps when you're doing sharp edges. This, um, just give it a check over, make sure it's nice and clean, and then you can reuse that again. Just keep it in a, a grip seal bag. Okay, so next we're going to smooth over with smoothers. So we've got top smoother and side smoother. The difference is that's got a beveled edge all the way around. That's got a little sharp bit down the bottom so you can get into doing that bottom edge. So just make sure that you use them the right way around because if you use that on the top, you could dig in. So I'm just going to smooth over. Just gives it a really nice, neat finish. And then just smooth down the edge just to start off with. And then we're going to do sharp edge in a moment. Also helps to make sure that it's nice and bonded with the cake, just to give it that nice smooth over. And next we're going to use flexi smoothers. So these are what you use for a sharp edge. So I'm just going to hold one smoother just to the side of the cake. And then I'm just going to use the flexi smoother over the top surface and then just gently massage that icing just so that it comes to that, to this outer edge, just nice and lightly so you get that nice sharp edge. You see that is starting to sharpen up straight away. Just using nice light pressure, you don't need to use firm pressure with this, otherwise you end up distorting your icing. 
rather than just creating a nice sharp edge. there now the difference that that makes. So now we're done with this smoother, I'm just going to move on to using the little rectangle flexi smoother and then all I'm going to do is I make sure that this side one is level with the top of the cake and that you can just slightly feel it and then just literally go over nice light pressure and then you can hear it sort of just scraping along that top edge and then just gently smooth that over and then you get really nice super sharp edge. And then last off, I'm just going to use this side smoother and I'm just going to really press down the base of that icing right to the base of the cake. And then make sure that your knife is nice and clean, so just give it a wipe if you've got any residue left on there. cut with the side of the cake Just remove that excess because yeah, that's how more in contact with the board and there might be residue of the board left on it I always just bin that bit don't save that bit then I have a pre-iced board ready, so all I've done with that is just wet the board with water and then just let that dry so it's nice and firm. And then I'm going to use royal icing just to stick it, stick it down. We don't need that much, probably a bit that much on there. And then just spread that in the centre. So now what we want to do is we just want to seal in this bottom edge. So we're going to do that with royal icing. Um, a lot of people forget to do that and you just see a gap round either the next tier, the two tiers, um, or that on the board. We always should just seal that in though, just making sure it's nice and smooth. And then, so you just pipe in with your royal icing bag. Make sure you've got your icing down the bag. And just pipe in that gap and then just a nice damp brush make sure it's not wet we just want it just nice and damp and then we're just gonna push that right into the end and blend it in just take off any excess onto your cloth You see any more little gaps, just fill them in, give it a little top up. And 
And we're just going to leave that to set for about 5-10 minutes. Okay. okay, so now we're going to apply twinkle dust to the bottom of the cake um, and also on the board. So I'm just going to apply edible glue, just brush it on. So it doesn't all have to be the same level, you can be, you want it to look a little bit like ice. You can leave away the line, so just brush all the way around. Again, to give it a little shake. So with this, because it's on a tilt and turn table, this will help a little bit. You need a little bit of non-slip just underneath. You might just scrap that and put this a little bit of mess. So it's at a slight angle. And then position it so it's pointed downwards and you always keep this upright and then just give it a really good spritz on that glue area. So then we're just going to let that set. So now we're going to stick on our snowflakes uh, with, royal, with the royal icing bag we had earlier. So just pipe a little bit on the back and then just stick them to the cake. Okay, so now we want to find um, the centre position to put the, the large snowflake in. So just do that with a ruler. And just mark with your scriber. And 
and that is your Winter Wonderland cake complete. Thank you for joining me on this Adventure Academy tutorial. I hope you enjoy the rest of the show.